So the Honor Magic 6 Pro is another 6.8 inch Android mega git, following hot on the heels of fellow chonksters like the Samsung Galaxy S24 Ultra. So if you're the owner of baggy pockets stuffed full of lovely cash and you want to swap some of that cash for a massive phone, well, you've already got lots of choice. I've been using the Magic 6 Pro as my full-time phone for a week, testing out the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 performance, the massive battery, that upgraded camera setup with a bonkers 180 megapixel telephoto shooter, and lots of other nifty features. So here's my full Honor Magic 6 Pro review, and for more on the latest and greatest tech, please do poke subscribe and ding that notifications bell. Cheers! Now there's no denying this smartphone feels proper chonky, even coming from the not exactly petite Galaxy S24 Plus. At around 225 grams, it's significantly heavier than Samsung's beef-tastic blower, in fact, it's about as weighty as the S24 Ultra. But thankfully, Honor has seen fit to round off the corners here on the Magic 6 Pro, so rather mercifully, when you are gripping it one-handed, you're not getting constantly jabbed in the palm. And the bezels here certainly aren't chunky. The screen actually curves slightly at the sides, hugging that metal frame. But despite this, I haven't had any issues with my hand flesh intruding onto that display and buggering up the sensitivity. I can happily recline in bed and grip the Magic 6 Pro supremely tightly because, let's face it, if I dropped it on my face, it would probably cave my skull in. And I can check my stocks or browse the latest global happenings or other stuff that grown-ups pretend to be interested in. And every poke and swipe is perfectly registered. And I'm also rather fond of that eco-leather arse end. That just means, of course, it's not made from actual cow bits. Just adds a lovely bit of texture to the back end of the Magic 6 Pro, which makes it easier to grip. And it also doesn't smudge up at all, no matter how much you fondle it, so you're not constantly wiping away grimy fingerprints or anything. As for that Squirkle camera, well, it sounds like a bloody Pokemon, but that forehead slapping marketing bollocks is actually alluding to the roundy, squarey design of the optical housing. The name may be horrendous, but the design is actually rather pleasant, at least to my booze-addled eyes. And that camera housing also doubles as a handy finger shelf because it juts so far out of the back end. The Magic 6 Pro is IP68 water and dust resistant like most modern flagships and we fully submerged in water, no worries. And on a related note, I also found the screen was surprisingly responsive still, even when it was quite damp or your fingers were wet. Even the in-display fingerprint sensor was still pretty dependable. However, I've got to say, when you're using the gesture navigation, occasionally my blood pressure did rise a wee bit. I've noticed if I'm using a messaging app, so I've got the virtual keyboard up, I try swiping away. Quite often what I end up doing is actually just swiping across the virtual keyboard and typing a load of nonsense. You've got to make sure you swipe up from the very, very bottom edge. Now, me and Honor's MagicOS launcher don't always see eye to eye. By which I mean it usually pisses me off in some great way and then I have to put it down and walk away and do some breathing exercises so I don't put my fist right through the f***ing screen. However, this is the spangly new Magic OS 8 slapped there on top of Android 14 like a nice juicy cherry on top of a delicious ice cream sundae. So it's definitely a whole lot better and a lot less rage inducing now, right? Well, Honor has packed many good features in here. As one example, I really like how the Magic 6 Pro automatically slides into a customizable smart display mode if you hibernate the phone while it's propped up on its side, a feature that they call standby. However, you might have noticed that that's strikingly similar to a feature that Apple added in the latest version of iOS, and this is where the Magic 6 Pro earns itself some serious chin stroke in action. Because Honor appears to have been heavily inspired by slash blatantly shamelessly nicked a whole bunch of features off of Apple for this oversized blower. Take for instance the hilariously blatant ripoff of the Dynamic Island, or the Floating Turd as it's charmingly known around these parts. And this behaves in a similar fashion when you're streaming audio, expanding into some handy media controls with just a quick tap. And then just like Samsung's Galaxy S24 series, there's also an always on display mode that is shockingly similar to Apple's effort, where you can still see some wallpaper just faded into the background there. And thankfully you can knock this right off in the settings. And if you've been following this phone for a while, you may remember that Honor teased some eye tracking features for the Magic 6 Pro a couple of months back. So staring at the dynamic island should automatically expand it and reveal more info, and then even eventually open the relevant app. Well, so far, bugger all sign of that particular feature, you do have some basic eye tracking squirreled away in the smart sensing settings, which can basically just check to see if you're still actually looking at your screen, and if your eyeballs are detected, then it prevents the screen from hibernating, and simple stuff like that. 
and he's hoping we get to see some of those more interesting features added in an update soon. But I've got to say overall Magic OS is getting there, you've got some decent features packed in there and it's a lot less irritating so you know thank the baby Jesus you can now drag down the notifications bar from anywhere on screen you don't have to reach all the way up to the top of this sozzing massive smartphone. And that only took several years of griping for them to finally sort out. And you've got respectable storage options here beginning at 256 gigs of the stuff rising up to I believe it's one terabyte but of course bugger all support for micro SD memory cards. Now the 6.8 inch OLED panel doesn't appear to have evolved much over last year's effort which is absolutely fine because it's not only massive, it's also supremely bright, sharp and pleasing to your peepers. It's a 2800 by 1280 pixel resolution ideal for a supersized screen like this. Tinkering with the colour output just tends to make things a bit warmer but the default mode pumps out clean whites and bold tones while the Magic 6 Pro also has full LTPO creds as you would expect. So that refresh rate scales from just 1Hz up to 120Hz for a satisfyingly smooth visual experience. And those stereo speakers are also cracking. Music doesn't sound completely awful through them if you absolutely must. And they're certainly good for video type shenanigans. You've got full DTSX Ultra support if you've got headphones with a tasty bit of that. And you can tweak the audio output no matter what kind of headphones you attach. And the entire time I've been testing this phone I had one brief kerfuffle with one pair of Bluetooth headphones I tested where the sound was a bit patchy but I just unpaired it, immediately paired back up again and it was absolutely fine and that issue did not return. Now performance is completely unsurprisingly an incremental update over last year's flagship with Qualcomm Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 ripped out and replaced by the fresher 8 Gen 3 in the Magic 6 Pro. It's absolutely one of the best mobile chipsets in 2024 and the brains of pretty much every premium phone out there so unsurprisingly apps run fluidly even when you've got dozens of the buggers on the go and you're flicking between them all. And if you count yourself as a bit of a gamer well you should enjoy your time grappling with this 7 inch beast. I've been testing the Honor Magic 6 Pro with a hefty dose of Genshin Impact naturally chucked up to the highest graphic settings at 60 frames per second. And that frame rate was generally stable even when things got proper tasty. Apart from just the occasional unexpected judder. These wee pauses were pretty rare but always surprising when they did happen. Especially as I had the performance mode switched on in the game and toolbar. This slide out panel also has a handful of other typical features like do not disturb. But it's not quite as comprehensive as what you'll find on rival phones from the likes of Sony and Xiaomi. No worries if you're proper addicted to your game of choice, the Magic 6 Pro keeps its cool even when you decide to sack off work for the afternoon and spend it twatting imaginary creatures in the face because it makes you feel like a real man slash woman slash whatever you identify as. Personally, I identify as 90% whiskey. So let's stroll away onto battery life. You've actually got a 5600 milliamp hour capacity battery stuffed inside of this frankly gigantic frame. That's a decent little size boost over the previous generation. Now I found the battery life in general with Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 smartphones is pretty bloody good. So add on to that the massive battery here and I found that I comfortably ended most days with at least a third of that battery remaining. With a full charge I find I tend to get at least 7 or 8 hours of screen on time with mixed use including a fair bit of camera play. It's only the likes of intensive gaming which really drains it faster. And you've also got support for 80 watt wired charging so it's a bit faster than the old Magic 5 Pro. So despite the fact that battery is freaking massive you won't have to bung a cable in the Magic 6 Pro for long before it's fully charged. And if you don't like cables well you've also got support for 66 watt wireless charging which is very nice indeed. Now when it comes to the camera tech Honor has gone for a completely different approach to the old Magic 5 Pro. So that main shooter in the Squircle setup is now a 50 megapixel Omnivision OVH 9000 sensor with optical image stabilization. And that shutter speed is as fast as you like and the Magic 6 Pro can actually take shots automatically on your behalf whenever it detects motion from the likes of cats and kids if you really can't be asked to push the shutter button yourself. Of course as you might expect this can be a bit hit and miss indiscriminately snapping away. You're best off just tapping that shutter button yourself when the moment is just right. And like a small selection of other flagship phones that main lens actually has a variable aperture. You can flick between f1.4 and f2.0 which is quite a limited range compared with some rivals from the likes of Huawei and Xiaomi. But still if you jump into the pro mode in the camera app you do actually have full control over that aperture. So you can manually flick between f1.4 and f2.0 to suit the situation. 
And there's quite a subtle adjustment to the likes of the bokeh style effect, given just how close those aperture settings are. But the Magic 6 Pro can also automatically switch apertures for brighter low light picks. And certainly most of my night snaps came out really well. As long as your subject freezes, because despite the nippy shutter speed, you will get a blurry photo if there's any kind of motion. Colours are correctly captured and there's not much noise at all, so even on a big screen, your low light picks should look reasonably sharp. You'll also get crisp, reasonably natural looking photos in ambient light, while my outdoor shots are packed with vivid colours and fine detail. Even with rather test and contrast, the Magic 6 Pro rarely fails to focus, and it usually spaffs out pleasingly balanced results. I found the portrait shots also often come out well, although wild hair and fuzzy subjects are smoothed out to quite an extreme degree. But of course it's not just that 50 meg main shooter on here, the Magic 6 Pro also serves up a couple of alternative cameras including a bonkers 180 megapixel periscope shooter. Now, unfortunately the 2.5x optical zoom lags behind many other flagships and even last year's model, and the unusually high megapixel count doesn't really make up for it, as it's using those MPs for pixel binning to keep your pics bright and bold. Even with Honor's post-processing shenanigans to sharpen things up, you will notice that things get kind of grainy kind of fast beyond the 10x zoom level, so yeah, definitely do not bother pinching into anywhere near the 100 times maximum zoom. And yeah, just in case you were wondering, you can actually shoot a 180 megapixel photo with that zoom lens if you swap to the high res mode. But this doesn't actually seem to have much of a positive impact on the detail captured. If anything, you usually just end up with a slightly washed out image. And last up is a 50 meg ultra wide angle shooter which spaffs out decent pics even when the light is a bit cack. It's only properly in the evenings that it's not really worth bothering with. Now swap to the video mode on the Magic 6 Pro and you can capture up to 4K resolution footage. There's no 8K option here but to be fair it always feels like kind of overkill on a smartphone. And besides Ultra HD video recorded on the Magic 6 Pro looks good, with colours again slightly boosted so vivid scenes really slap. Stabilisation is good enough to counter both handshakes and any general motion, so don't feel like you have to freeze up while you're shooting. And yeah, you can easily flick between the different lens options whenever you like, with minimal disruption to that picture. And no complaints on the audio up front either, it's a really solid setup. And then last up, up front you've got that dual lens arrangement, you've got a 50 megapixel selfie shooter plus a time of flight sensor as well for 3D face matchmaking shenanigans. You'll want to keep your hand and your face as still as possible in softer light or you will end up a bit fuzzy, but besides that it certainly does the job for all of those glamour pics. And that right there my lovelies in a delicious wee nutshell is the fresh new Honor Magic 6 Pro and it's a bit of a banger of a flagship all around, even if it is a serious chonkster. My biggest complaint with previous Honor flagships was always the Magic OS software but it's certainly improving, it's a lot less bloody irritating that's for sure. You know you've got dependable performance, long battery life, fast charging, you've got a solid bit of camera tech slapped on there, so overall enjoyed my time with this bad boy right here stuffed in my pants. That's what I reckon anyway, it'd be great to hear your thoughts on the Honor Magic 6 Pro Squirkle camera and all down in the comments. Please do poke subscribe, ding that notifications bell for more on the latest and greatest tech and believe me there's a lot more fun where this came from. And have yourselves a ruddy wonderful rest of the week. Cheers everyone, love you!